Newt, what are you what are you doing down there? I found this weird book under the counter. It's uh looks like it's bound in human flesh and written in human blood. Clearly you need to read it. I've just been informed that we are going off the air. Ugh. Newt, I can't believe you read from that ancient book, Bound in Human Flesh and Inked in Human Blood, which released nightmare things from weird, epic worlds. Tony, you worry too much. Now we could just stay here and watch all of our favorite shows featuring epic worlds on AMC+. Plus. AMC+, Plus, you say? Yeah, I signed up for it while you were barricading the door. Now we have all the time in the world to binge and even get early access to new episodes of Fear the Walking Dead and The Walking Dead Extended 10th Season. I'm still terrified beyond the capacity for rational thought, but I am excited to watch two seasons of a bold romantic thriller that uncovers a secret underworld of vampires, witches, and demons. A discovery of witches. Speaking of monsters, I'm so ready for Shudder's Halfway to Halloween Month with exclusive premieres like Train to Busan Presents, Peninsula, and of course season two of the gleefully macabre series Creepshow. The exciting anthology series based on the 1982 horror comedy classic, each episode is a whole new horror experience with a variety of different monsters, creatures, and supernatural beings. Exactly. So start your seven day free trial today and dive into all the exciting action AMC Plus has to offer. <laughs> It's time to hack the movies. Today, we're talking about tapes with Tony and Newt. Well, Newt, you screwed up. <laughs> well, wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> you, you read from the ancient book. Mm -hmm. uh, you've unleashed a zombie horde. Yeah. Now it's just us. I thought it was zombie horror and I got excited. Like <laughs> No, no. Uh, it's just us no. and the guy across the street who are alive. Let's wave to him. Hi. Don't die. Yeah. Try not to die. He's probably going to die. Yeah, probably. Anyway, uh, <laughs> this reminds me of that movie, Dawn of the Dead. Oh, I was not going to say that. What were you going to say? Uh, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days with Matthew McConaughey. This reminds me of <laughs> Dawn of the Dead. Yes. And that other movie. Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> Which one? Uh, yes, we are talking about Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead, the extended version. My, Too scary my, for theaters. That's funny when I saw that. My yeah. boy Zack Snyder. Your boy Zack if Snyder. If we only knew. If we only knew. Uh, yes, uh, we are revisiting this because he's about to unleash his other zombie flick. Yeah, uh, Army of the Dead on Army Netflix. of the Dead. Yeah. Yep. Uh, which looks interesting. Did the, did the trailer come out? I yeah. Oh, it kind of reminded me, um, Steve Niles, the dude who did, like, uh, 30 Days of Night, I think he had a zombie book that was also, like, a oh. bank heist move, uh, comic. Oh, that sounds cool. And it was, like, in Las Vegas, and I think this one's in Vegas, but it was shot in Atlantic City, New Jersey, because I know a lot of people who are yeah. in this. Yeah. Yeah, so we thought we'd, uh, visit his, uh, previous entry into the zombie genre. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so, uh, what did, what did you think about this movie when it came out, Newt? <laughs> well, this is before I learned to not care about anything and not like get excited about things yeah. or upset about things. Because I was so righteously indignant when this movie was coming out. Mm -hmm. Because I'm like, how do you... Because still to this day, in 2004 was a long time ago. Still to this day, depending on my mood, Texas Chainsaw Massacre or 1978's Dawn of the Dead are the greatest independent film of all time. Yeah. And uh, when this was coming out, they're like, some fucking music video director, Zach, fuck is Zack Snyder, is remaking Dawn of the Dead? I know, Newt. <laughs> Who in their right mind would look at a classic George Romero movie and say, I can do better? I'd like to remind everyone that you can watch Hack the Living Dead on this channel, and you can buy Hack the Living Dead merchandise on our merch store. It appears the bodies of the recently deceased are rising from the grave and attacking the living. Night of the Living Dead has ended. 
Hack the Living Dead is here. Unless it's stinking, you know what I mean, the reefer dinking. Directed by Tony from Hack the Movies and George Romero. And George Romero. See, see, it's not bad when I did it, because I did it with the director. Oh, okay. I mean, and by that, I mean I added stuff to it <laughs> several years after he died. I know, I shot all your green screen scenes. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Wow. Wow, Just live saying. long enough to become the villain. <laughs> you shit on Zack Snyder for ruining George Romero, and then here no. you are, years later, going, well, let's ruin George Romero. I actually, this movie holds up really well. I remember yeah. um, when it was coming out being like, fuck this, and then mm. that first trailer came out where it's like the screen goes white of the projector, yeah. and all the zombies are behind the screen, they're pushing out. I was like, that was really cool. Yeah. Um, and then you said you didn't remember this, but USA aired like the first 12 minutes of this movie completely uncut yeah i don't remember that at and all. i remember i was working at the comic book store at that time and we were like talking about it. i was like ah, we'll watch it and i was like this is great like yeah. this is you know because at the time like the resident evil movies were out and yeah. they were what they were uh 28 days later had come out already yeah Shaun of the dead i remember coming out after this but you said i'm wrong Shaun of the Dead came out before this in Europe. Okay. Yeah. I had it... Uh, so, I, yeah, I saw this before Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. But I had Shaun of the Dead on video before Shaun of the Dead even came to and America. I, yeah, me too. I had a bootleg of it. Somebody burned me that yeah. and Cemetery Man, the, uh, the, yeah. the Italian yeah. movie. Um, so I, I'd seen that, but like this was kind of early on. And then this movie, Justin Bates said it when we were down here watching it or watching it in the store. Yeah. Um, that like Before he died. Before he died. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> rest in peace. Wow. Um, <laughs> He can rest. I don't know about peace. Let's, let's not be too nice. To <laughs> anyway, keep going. Um, that uh, Yeah, so there wasn't really a lot of zombie stuff at this point. Yo, don't worry. This exploded the zombie. Yes. Yeah, you're right. There wasn't really zombie things yeah. in the mainstream for years. And then, it, you're right, you had Resident Evil, uh, 20 Days Later, this, Shaun of the Dead. And then, and then it boom. Blew up. Yeah. And then it got around 2010, 2011. It was starting to get a little annoying. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't. I'm the guy who wrote Swamp Zombies too, so I don't. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're part of the problem. I am part of the problem. Well, I'm yeah. not. Zombies by Design by David Wascavich. You so. <laughs> shut your mouth. Zombies by Design is a great film. It is the first feature film to feature Tony from Hack the Movies. I was supposed to be in that movie. Wow. Yeah. Could have linked up. With fourteen-year-old Tony, probably would have been, probably would have been awkward yeah. if you linked up with the fourteen-year-old me <laughs> uh, at the time. <laughs> hey, it's me, Newt. I'm, oh, oh, oh no, oh no, I'm gonna hang out with this fourteen-year-old high school kid. To be fair, when I used to hang out with Justin when he was sixteen, when I was driving him to conventions and stuff yeah. like that, so whatever, <laughs> whatever. So yes, uh, zombie stuff got annoying. I mean, there's still good zombie stuff here. And yeah. there. Walking Dead is great. We love Walking Dead. So yeah, when this came out, I think I saw this before the original. Mm -hmm. uh, really? Yeah. Wow. So I wasn't... Because remember, I was... Was 2004? I would have been 14 around this okay. time. So I was kind of getting into more of the like classics. Not like classic, but less like Hollywood horror films. Yeah. I started like dipping my toes into this. So eventually I did see... Night of the Living Dead, and mm. then I fell in love with the original yeah. Dawn of the Dead, and I have it here. I have that one, too. This is the copy you want. There is a Blu-ray. We were looking at it on eBay. There is a Blu-ray. They only released it on Blu-ray once, from what it seems. Mm. I don't even know if it's an official Blu-ray. Yeah. It is over... It's around $200, yeah. depending on where you're getting it from, but this was a big deal when it came out. Uh, it is... Suncoast Video. Yeah, it is all three versions of Dawn of the Dead. And I have it autographed by the cast. Mm -hmm. uh, Is it Monster, Mad uh, Monster Mania? Yeah, yeah Monster I mean, Mania. So. Yeah, I have Galen Ross, Ken Forey. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Ted, the guy who plays Roger. Oh, okay. And then, uh, oh no, Roger's back here. This yeah. is Flyboy. Fly and then I have Roger on this side. Yeah, they were all at one Monster Mania. Yeah, I got like, all them. So they saw, I have the Italian lobby card where it's zombie because this is what inspired yeah. Zombie 2. Yes. Um, even though there was never a Zombie 1. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, Tom Savini, but I got Tom Savini to sign my Creep Show poster. Tom Savini signed my Night of the Living De Dead remake. Okay. And then Joe Pilato signed my Day of the Dead nice. <laughs> DVD. So I still remember the very first time that I ever saw Dawn oh, of the Dead. Quick. Oh, real quick. I have it here. Um... Oh, God damn it. It's stuck it's, to the it's wall. It's stuck to the thing. 
Night of the Living Dead, signed by the very first zombie. Oh, right cool. Here. Yeah. Anyway, keep going. Yeah, uh, I because the ver the opening of Dawn of the Dead takes place in Philadelphia. Yes. And uh, there used to be a channel called Prism, which mm -hmm. was like local cable HBO, like all okay. the like. The 76ers, the Flyers, the Phillies used to be on it, and they're the sports team, pro sports teams in Philadelphia. Yes. And in the late 80s, early 90s, like my dad, we would watch the Flyers game, and if they played like on the West Coast, it would be like a 10 o'clock start. So yeah. my dad would fall asleep on the sofa, and then I would just stay up stay to up, watch yeah. whatever was after it. That's the first time I ever saw softcore porn <laughs> was on that, and like Friday the 13th Part 5, but so... Um, Pink Floyd's The Wall was on one Saturday night, and I was like, what the fuck is this? I've never heard of this. I have a review for Pink Floyd's The Wall. I've heard. Yes. And then Dawn of the Dead came on. It starts in Philadelphia, and I remember being like, it made me feel uncomfortable. Because I like at that point, it's like, oh, I know movies were made in Pennsylvania and stuff like that, mm. but I had never seen anything like this at that point, and I just remember like it made me like feel weird. When the yeah. movie was over, I just remember being like, the nihilism of it like, yeah. was something I wasn't well, prepared for. If they shot the ending, they wanted yeah, to shoot it to be even more nihilistic. Um, yeah, so I fell in love with the yeah. original Dawn mm -hmm. of the Dead. And then for a while, I was like an asshole. I'm like, ah, the remake was stupid. It was yeah. all action-based. Mm -hmm. But um, having come back to it uh, a couple years ago, yeah. I was like, you know what? This is a good way to do a remake. Yeah. Like, you do the same idea, mm -hmm. the same concept, and you twist it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I think we talk about that with uh, Suspiria mm -hmm. is a really good example of oh, a remake. I love the Suspiria remake, and I get shit on all the time. I think it's better than the original. <laughs> I think, no, I love it. Um, I really like the Hills of Eyes remake. Yeah, I, I went to the- I kind of like that better than I, the original. I went to the premiere of that. Yeah. No, no, I, so there are remakes that are fine, and mm -hmm. I know around this time it was getting annoying with the remakes. Yeah. Like Texas Chainsaw, mm -hmm. there were a lot of remakes at this yeah. time. This is also the time where they were like, "Oh, did a horror movie do okay in Japan? All right, get a girl from Buffy. Let's remake it." Dark Water and The Grudge, The Grudge, and, the, uh, ring. the Ring. Like yeah. there were a couple good examples, and then they went a little crazy mm -hmm. with what was. Didn't it they one? do the one about the cell phone? One missed call, Something and then like the eye. Oh, There's that's so right. So many of those. The eye was one of the first, one of the very first times that Crystal and I ever hung out. We saw <laughs> the eye. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's uh, get into Zack Snyder's Dawn, Dawn of, of the, the Dead. Dead. We watched the extended cut mm -hmm. with an intro from Zack yeah. Snyder, <laughs> where he prepares you for a longer movie. <laughs> Oh, Zach, if you only knew. If you only knew, Zach, how long your movies would get. <laughs> the movie's a little bit longer, so you have to prepare yourself for that. Uh, I hope you're able to uh, uh, enjoy it the way I do, because for me, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit more personal than the, the movie that you saw in the theater. So, you know, sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy it. Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, and Day, that I, they're kind of sequels, but kind of yeah. not. There's loose continuity. Mm -hmm. But it's supposed to show you, like, different stages and the same zombie, like, Apocalypse, takeover. yeah. The original starts you right off. Yeah. Like, the, everything's all gone to mm -hmm. shit. Yep. We're, we're shooting people in an apartment complex. Yeah. We're going nuts. Will, Willie's is... gone ape shit. Willie's gone ape shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Why'd they leave that scene out? <laughs> this one. <laughs> he said some things. Oh, he did Not say, that yeah. this movie is the Point of saying some things, yeah. but uh, yeah. But even there's, yeah, because there's one scene where I went, ooh, even in 2004, like. No, that's just the way it was back then. Yeah. Before PC culture, am I? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Anyway, uh, so this version of Dawn of the Dead is not a sequel to no. the remake of Night of the Living yeah. Dead, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of its own thing. So this one has a slower build. Not too slow. There's just yeah. a little bit of a build up where mm -hmm. like uh, Sarah Polly, who is more of an indie writer and director, yeah, but she acts is, occasionally. She acts occasionally. She did, she's done some documentaries and stuff like that. Yeah. I knew her from uh, anyone who's a fan of the Friday the 13th TV series. Yeah. She's the little girl in the pilot episode with that's the funny. haunted doll. And that's what I, because she's Canadian. Yeah. And I knew her from that. And then, like, years later, she'd gone on and done mm. other things. But, uh, you know, it was interesting casting. Yeah. So this starts, she's a nurse in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. They They robbed us. Yeah. This movie should, like the original, should take place in the Superior, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah. You hear uh, that, Phil Wisconsin? Yeah, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been to Monroeville. Me too. In uh, Pennsylvania. I love that place. I used to have a shirt that said, uh, when there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the mall. Mm -hmm. I have pictures from my trip to there. Um, One of my first girlfriends uh, was looking at Carnegie Mellon. 
as mm. a college and I made I was like we have to go yeah. to Monroe, Monroeville Mall and when I explained her why she's Did just, you go to Evans City Cemetery? Yeah. And get the picture where Nicholas yep. Kramer's had when some? We, when we went and she's just like that was kind of when she was like I don't this isn't for me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there used to be like a zombie museum in the mall. Oh yeah. I've had friends There's a pi- bus now over Marrow, right? There, there was a plaque when I went in okay. 2010 All right. or 2009 there was a plaque when I went um there was like a cool store that had a zombie museum. Yeah. I think it's since been removed. Okay. I don't know. I haven't been there in a long I, time. Last, I was there in 2002. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, slow build up in this one. So you get the, you get like little hints at things mm-hmm. uh, where it's just like, oh yeah, someone was bit, but they moved to ICU and they're like over a bite. Yeah, so they're like they're sprinkling little things. Bringing that are, like, in another uh, person who's got like blood all over their shirt. Yeah. And- yeah. And then, um, you know, on her way home, she sees a little girl. And she's like, hi, little girl who's going to come back later. Mm-hmm. And she has a romantic evening with her husband. Yeah. Well, they're watching her. Her husband's watching American Idol when she got home. Yes. And literally, Kieran and I were driving yesterday and we got in a conversation about American Idol because my cousin went, went uh, my cousin went to the final eight in 2010. Mm-hmm. And that's the only time I've ever seen American Idol. And I was like, oh, yeah, I don't think that show's still on. And Kieran's like, no, it's still on. And he knew a lot more about American Idol than I expected. (laughs) Um, But, yeah, so she's talking to her husband in bed about, like, you know, Mm. oh, you know, switching shifts. And she's like, oh, I'm not going to miss date night. And then they have sex in the shower. Yeah. Which I (laughs) – it's not. It's not fun. great, especially when the other person's way taller than you. Yeah, it's yeah. not fun. Like you, you always try it in college mm-hmm. when you're experimenting. Like after the first time, I was like, "This sucks. I'm never doing it." And then like, every girl's like, "Oh, we should do it." I'm like, yeah. How about we don't? But I like when people have like scheduled sex times, <laughs> and like it's so fucking clinical. It's like things just happen, you know. Um. Yeah. So the next day, this movie doesn't waste no, a lot the, of time. At the dawn. At the, the dawn dead. of the next day, <laughs> a little girl from earlier in the movie has no lips, and then she kills the husband. Yeah. Uh, and then and I like that the first kill is the bite of the neck with the stretch, which is yeah. just like in the 78 version, yeah. which yeah. I thought was really cool. Uh, and it's a pretty tense scene yeah. where she's like in the bathroom, and he's trying to break in. Mm-hmm. She escapes, and there's that great shot where it just shows this town has just gone <laughs> to hell. Uh, in such a short period of time. Like, I used to think about that. Like, when zombie stuff became really popular, I'd just let my mind wander and be like, what would I do yeah. in this situation? And yeah. it was like, I'd be dead so fucking fast. Yeah. Or, if things ever happen, Tony, you're my human shield. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see There's you good eating on you. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. Um, <laughs> no, we were talking about it. I, uh, I said this while we were watching. Um, a friend once said that they had a zombie nightmare. Mm-hmm. Not the Adam West movie. Zombie nightmare. No, yeah. they had a nightmare about zombies and they're like, yeah, and you were in it. And cause you know a lot about horror movies. You're like, I'll save everyone. And I was just like, let me stop you right there. <laughs> that was a very unrealistic dream. I would never in a million years help someone in need. My, my own life is at risk. I will run away. <laughs> Boy, you are such a bully. The internet was right about you. <laughs> no, this isn't me being a bully. This is me being a coward. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Just like the Italians. <laughs> you shut your mouth. <laughs> so this movie uses running zombies. Yes. And I said which, to you, I was like, what, I don't like that death became an energy drink. You know? yeah. <laughs> uh, so 28 Days Later did not invent running zombies. No. It sure as hell popularized yeah. it, though. I always say, like, um, uh, Umberto Lenzi's mm. um, Nightmare City yeah. is the first one that I remember ever having. Well, the first Night of the Living Dead, the zombie kind of runs a little bit. Yeah. Not gracefully. Mm-hmm. He doesn't sprint. Return of the Living Dead clearly has yeah. running zombies. But 28 Days Later popularized mm-hmm. the running zombies. Yeah. But they were like more like rabies. Like they were like rabid. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. They're... But not the David Cronenberg movie, Rabid. They were basically zombies. Yeah. Uh, and this movie also kind of takes, at times, mm-hmm. it takes the uh, quick infection. Yeah. Uh, it's it should have picked which one it wanted to do because sometimes people get infected really quick and then sometimes it takes yeah longer. it's very much a plot convenience kind of thing because what I liked the twenty days later it got rid of the cliche of someone's bit and they're hiding yeah it. it's just like oh you're bit you're dead bye well, yeah because the dude wasn't it the, wasn't he in Harry Potter mm-hmm. the one guy and he gets the the blood drop in his eye yeah. and he turns really quick and he tries to get his daughter to like yeah. go away. Yeah. yeah, so this movie kind of picks and chooses from mm. that. So it's definitely taken some pages from 28 Days Later, yeah. even though 20 Days Later didn't invent all that yeah. stuff. Uh, during all this madness, the helicopter from the, from original. the original shows up. Well, it's because you have, like, 
she's driving through her suburban neighborhood. Yeah. A fucking dude gets run over by an ambulance, <laughs> yeah, you know? Right. Uh, so there's all this crazy stuff going on. I love that the husband's chasing her and then in he the sees car. Someone else. And then he sees someone else who's not infected and he just veers off to get her, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, so like she's driving and the, there's a cool crane shot above the suburban neighborhood, which echoes the. Mm peaceful suburban crane shot they had. Right. Like the drone type of shot before right. that. Um, yeah, fucking, she just keeps going when that car hits another car into a uh, oh, gas yeah. station and it explodes. <laughs> but like her car, because it's all digital basically, yeah. uh, her car doesn't move at all. Like you would probably like swerve, yeah. but she's like, oh, explosion. And then mm-hmm. she keeps going. And then you see the helicopter, the, the yellow and brown helicopter yeah. from the original. Could it be the same people? It could be. Could it's be Flyboy. Ca- so in the seventies, they it took them that long to get the. Well, it's like a, it's like a, uh, what's that movie where they like, go, oh, the episode of the Twilight Zone where they go into like a time portal, oh, and right. they go back to like the airplane goes back to dinosaurs. <laughs> um, zombie dinosaurs. Yeah. <sighs> Shut up. <laughs> so Sarah Polly crashes, then we get the opening title yes, sequence, which is great. Zack Snyder does do a good opening title. Sequence. I said this and Watchmen are two of my favorite opening title sequences of any movie ever. Yeah. It's like up there with um, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo remake. Mm. I fucking love that with Karen O's version of um, Immigrant Song by Led oh, Zeppelin. Yeah. So fucking good. Yeah, and then um, Johnny Cash is playing the whole Johnny time. Johnny Cash, yeah. Uh, Justin came down and said they ripped off the end of Logan despite the fact that... This they, came out way earlier. Very earlier. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and there's like, you see like how the rest of the world... And some of it's like real footage of like mm-hmm. actual stuff. We see zombies and whatnot. Yeah. And then we see the Capitol building and, you know, the security de- forces are doing a good job keeping the zombies at bay from the Capitol building being attacked. Um, moving on. We find out the screenplay was written by James Gunn. Yes. Hot off of Scooby-Doo. <laughs> yes. I think you did an episode about that with two guys that you never introduced. I didn't introduce them. I should have introduced them. I unsubscribed. Well, look, I introduced... Mint salad and Riley. <laughs> you did. <laughs> or mint busy. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so when she comes to, she meets Ving Rames because mm-hmm. he's tough. Yeah. And then they link up with a couple other survivors where it's uh, Best Buy guy because he works at Best Buy. Um, Mackie Mc- Pfeiffer. Mackie Pfeiffer. Mackie Pfeiffer. And I said, this is no movie. There's no Mackie Pfeiffer. <laughs> what is that from? Eight Mile. Oh. It's it's in the rap. Like, oh. You never, I don't remember Eight Mile. Eminem. That well. He's I know what it is. Bunny Rabbit was his rap name. His hands were sweaty. Mom <sighs> Spaghetti. <laughs> I didn't watch. I, I watched it once. Rest in peace, Brittany Murphy, man. Brittany Murphy was great. Brittany Murphy and Tom uh, and uh, Tom Petty, so we can never have a real King of the Hill I know. Reunion, which bums me out, because that show's only gotten better with age. Oh, yeah. King of the Hill's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so they link up. Uh, oh, and uh, Mackay Pfeiffer's wife is pregnant. And she's the the only thing I've ever seen that woman in other than this that I can remember was iRobot. Remember iRobot? Oh, do we have that? With uh, We might we might actually have iRobot. Yeah. Directed by uh, Alex Puyas. Uh, we do. It's over there. The director of The Crow. Right. Alex Puyas. Um, Dark, we should do Dark City sometime. I fucking love Dark City. Dark City's great. Yeah. I love Dark City. They get to them all mm-hmm. because this is one of the things it takes from the original. Yeah. Like you have to kind of have them all because mm-hmm. that's become so iconic. Uh, as you can tell, they made a video game. It's right in front of your Oh, yeah. There. Dead Rising. Uh, Which I've never played, but I remember back when we were doing Underbelly, people would tell me to because they're like, oh, it's about zombies and it takes place in a mall and you used to work in a mall. I don't know why you would play it because video games are for children. Well, yes. But if you do play it, that's the original. Except for the games that I produced for Screamwave Media. Uh (laughs) Buy those. Uh, no, that game's a lot of fun. We have the Xbox One remaster mm-hmm. somewhere, which nicer graphics, same games. Okay. I never played the sequels, but yeah. yeah, Dead Rising is a lot of fun. I think there's a couple Dead Rising movies. So they get to the mall and they're attacked. And you said one of the zombies attacking them is someone from MTV? Oh, yeah, it's uh, uh, Matt... Pinfield, I think, was the dude's name. He was like a bald guy who used to be like the heavy metal guy. Yeah. And I remember MTV did like these, like, we're on location for yeah. Dawn of the Dead. And he was supposed <laughs> to have a way bigger scene. It was just cut down to he's the bald zombie who comes in after the one armed zombie. And I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Matt Pinfield. Like, good for him. Uh, so, yeah, this is kind of like, unlike the original, there are no zombies in the mall. No. Well, well, Kinda. In the original, the mall is like overrun. Overrun, yeah. 
Yeah, well, there's like a there's a bunch in there. Yeah. So I like when uh, they're exploring. The one guy gets attacked, and he just shoves the broken pool mm-hmm. cue through the which thing's was head. done a year before that in Punisher. The Tom Jane Punisher. Oh, yeah. Remember, he does that to the guy, and I was like, oh, yeah. But it was cool. He takes a cricket bat, and I was quoting all the lines from Ninja Turtles to you. I was like, cricket? You got to know what a crumpet (laughs) is. And then Justin was like, I didn't, when I was a kid, I had to, like, ask people what cricket and crumpet were, and I was like, aw. (laughs) He mentioned that in our Ninja Turtles episode. And then we find out Doug from House of Cards is the head of security Mm -hmm. there. It's weird seeing him with hair. Yeah, he's also in Man of Steel. He's a Man of Steel, and uh, remember House of Cards? Yeah. Remember they tried to do... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they tried to continue that show. Mm-hmm. All right, look, I get, I get it. Kevin Spacey fucked up. He admitted to fucking up. You couldn't bring him back. I get it. Should have ended the show. Yeah. The fact that they tried to do, like, you can't have, was it four or five seasons mm-hmm. building up to this epic showdown between Frank Underwood and Claire, only to have the last season be like, oh, he's dead. We're doing this other thing now. It's like, that's, no. <laughs> End the show. The show is done. What if it came, what if they got real ballsy and the last season was set in space? <laughs> you know what? I would have accepted it. <laughs> that guy's also, that actor is in another movie I really, really like called Lars and the Real Girl. Oh, yeah. Have you ever seen that one before? Uh, I think so, With yeah. Ryan Gosling. Yeah, with the, with the real doll. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, he's a good actor. I like him and stuff. Uh, he's pretty great in this. I yeah. totally forgot he was mm-hmm. in this. There's a lot of weird character actors where I go, oh, I know that person from this or that or the other thing. One of the security guards is the dude in the movie Cry Wolf, the Bon Jovi horror movie from oh, right. the year before this. Right. And it also has the girl who's going to come in later. Yeah. The redheaded girl was also who's in this is also the blowjob girl in, <laughs> in Wrong, Wrong Turn, Turn yeah. is also in Cry Wolf. And Cry Wolf is a terrible fucking <clears throat> movie. I never saw it. The cover of it has like a dude in like a, a orange ski mask. Yeah. And that's all I remember about it. Because a girl, this girl I was seeing at the time, Christy said, oh, that girl looks like me. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I look like Eric Bana. Somebody yeah. told me once. I was like, if you squint <laughs> if you have Tony eyes maybe <laughs> alright yeah so you said the TV station should have been WGON, W-G-O-N which was in the original one I just thought that would be a cool comeback because yeah. what they do here is kind of cool where they're all watching all the different the media of yeah. what's going on in the world so you could still have a self-contained closed circle story like the original like yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre whatever Night of the Living Dead with that, but still show that there's a global yeah, because in the other movies, on. you didn't realize how global it was. Yeah. Because they were all, like, kind of self-contained. Mm-hmm. Uh, Even in Day of the Dead, like, when Florida's completely taken yeah. over, you don't get, like, here when we're watching, when you get to the end where there's the giant, I'm like, that's clearly every person who lives in the state of Wisconsin yeah. is in that parking lot right now, <laughs> you know? Um, but, yeah, I like that they took that from the uh, original films mm-hmm. where the characters are constantly watching the TV yeah. for updates. I think it was perfected mm-hmm. and hacked the living dead. That's what I've heard. <laughs> with, with the uh, brilliant host, Tab Burton. There's only one group of people who uh, carry themselves in such disgusting ways as to appear to be torn to pieces, and that's communists. This is when the movie starts throwing you cameos. Yeah. You get a Tom Savini cameo. As he's, a sheriff. Yeah, he's kind of playing the like sheriff from the first mm-hmm. Night of the Living Dead. He's yeah. like, yeah, shoot him in the head. They seem to go down. I like Which he's is, like, you got a twitcher over there. Yeah, and he's like, twitcher, that guy's fucking cool. Yeah, uh, Chili Billy was the dude in the original one. Uh, right. He was, uh, he was kind of like... 1960s Pittsburgh's Mr. Lobo, like a horror <laughs> host guy. And then his daughter was the lead in, in Day, Day of the Dead. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, and then uh, we get a cameo from uh, the guy who played Roger yep. in the original. As like a military guy. Yeah, I think pretty much everyone, except for Galen except Ross, for Galen but Ross, they but reference her. They reference her. So they couldn't get any real businesses to let their, except for like Panasonic. Well, Panasonic isn't a business. Well, well I, no, there were Panasonic stores. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think that's what it was. It was just... There's a lot of Panasonic, placement. not Fast and the Furious level mm-hmm. Panasonic, but yeah. Panasonic. <laughs> Zack Snyder's like, I wonder if I could get IHOP and uh, 7-Eleven and we can really, <laughs> um, yeah, Galen Ross is, the, so they couldn't get real businesses, so they yeah. have, uh, they had to make up names for things, yeah. and one of the clothing stores is called Galen Ross, which yeah. is the actress from the original, which I thought was a cool little nod. Yeah. The coffee shop is called Metropolis, which is funny because it gets destroyed, and later he would have Superman completely destroy it, yes. and they're always in front of a sign that says Hollowed Grounds, 
because it's a cemetery and they're basically living among the dead, which I thought was a nice but it, little... But it's also like a coffee thing, mm -hmm. so grounds. Like, yeah. Ah, that's funny. Uh, I did enjoy that. Um, and then we have uh, Sarah Polly is uh, doing first aid, but she has like a breakdown. Which I, I, I thought that was real. There's a lot of really good character moments in this because I, I don't think I'd ever... I, I think I've only seen this director's cut once, okay. but I remembered a lot more of the theatrical cut than I thought. And I was like, I like that they give her a moment to like, all this shit's happening, and then she gets a quiet moment to have a breakdown, mm. and then has to snap right back into it. So everybody gets to be human yeah. amongst this insanity, and I thought that was really handled well. I, it was handled yeah. really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really, 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 really uh, like that little bit of character uh, building there. Yeah. So yeah, at this point, the zombies know that there's people in the mall, mm -hmm. and they start like surrounding it. And yeah. then the only other survivor is the guy who owns the gun store. Yeah, what's his name? Do you remember his name? Uh, gun store guy. <laughs> gun store. It guy. says the name of the on the thing too. It's like. Oh wait, hold on. Oh. Its name is probably here because on the DVD, he's like an older dude with a ponytail. Andy. Andy's guns and goods. Andy, because yeah. on this DVD extra, here, here, let, let's talk about the extras okay. here real quick. Um, splitting headaches, anatomy of exploding heads. Oh, no, that's cool. Uh, Attack of the Living Dead, an up close look at the mo film's most memorable zombie Is there kills. any better effect crowd pleaser in a horror movie than a head explosion? I don't know. Raising the Dead, from early concept to final effects. Mm -hmm. And then here we go. The Lost Tape, over 15 minutes of terrifying footage reveal revealed. Chilling images from a recovered home movie document Andy's last horrific days as he battles zombie hordes outside his gun shop and fights to maintain his sanity. I really like that they just gave, because he doesn't say anything in yeah. the movie, but then they gave him like all this extra stuff. Uh, so Andy had all that security system and all that, yeah. to, uh, but he didn't have sandwiches, which leads to the movie's <laughs> downfall. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I like how there's a guy across the street, much like uh, that person across the street. How you doing? He's, I don't think he's going to be all right. I hope he has sandwiches. It looks like he has a lot of sandwiches. Oh, yeah. 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 Anyway, <laughs> uh, I love when the helicopter comes, when they make their sign. Yeah. And they're like, Help. Well, cause Yeah, because they're like, the security guy's like, we got it all under control. And he's like, well, I'm sure you thought about putting a signs sign on up. the roof <laughs> and like barricading the place. And he's just like, yeah. But he clearly hadn't, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Also, they're mall security, but they have guns. I personally have not seen a mall security guy with a gun. I told you my story. Yep. I used to have a store in a mall, mm -hmm. and there was a security guard who had a gun who, it's your right as an American to bear arms, but this guy shouldn't have had a gun. <laughs> okay? You know how you just see, he, like, he was like the grown-up version of the I Like Turtles kid, <laughs> you know? And I was like, oof. <laughs> Everybody with a bowl haircut and a thousand yard stare, you kind of go. Mm. <laughs> so let me know. Did your mall security guys have guns? Let, let us know. I want to know how realistic. No, because people who watch this are going to go, what the fuck's a mall? <laughs> <laughs> malls used to be places mm -hmm. you went to. That's where I spent a lot of time back yeah, in see, the day. Yeah, see, malls killed all the small businesses and you had to go to big name stores inside mm -hmm. malls. And then Amazon killed malls. And then who knows what'll kill Amazon? Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they see the uh, the, helicopter. the military helicopter on the roof, yeah. and they're like, oh, they're going to come back for us. And you and I were just like, what the fuck was that giant military thing going to land on the roof yeah, of a mall? Like, you can't just, there was no landing pad for it. Yeah. I mean, I guess it could have landed, but it would have been too risky. So I live near, like, uh, a, a air it's like a small airstrip mm -hmm. and they have like a military museum there of yeah. like uh, aircrafts. You know where. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Where it is. Yeah. And they have like. So when I first moved in, I was like, oh, I'm going to go check this out. Like, it's kind of cool. And these things are like up close are fucking massive. They're gigantic. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like. And then I was worried that one of them might turn into a transformer. <laughs> and we don't know because they're robots in disguise. That's true. And I was thinking it would be like uh, Revenge of the Fallen or whatever it was. I would go in to Washington and come out <laughs> in Arizona because I think that's what happened in that movie. I like, think that <laughs> is what happened in that movie. Um, yeah, yeah. So they're they're mad that the helicopter doesn't land. Yeah. It's like, well, yeah, it's not a news helicopter. It's a pretty big helicopter. Exactly. And then if it was, like, how are you going to get all those people in there? Yeah. yeah. Or it's probably full of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because wasn't oh. it in 28 Days Later where they're like, there's probably a bunker or a helicopter and like prestigious people are, they're, they're taken care of. Yeah. And that's like the thought process that they have to keep going because somebody's going to come and help them, you know? Oh, yeah. I thought that was kind of a cool idea. Yeah. Uh, and then we get Ken Foray. Ken Foray. He gets a little uh, cameos in a, uh, a preacher. Yeah. 
Uh, and, and again, uh, Ken Foray and um, uh, Dwayne Jones in Night of the Living Dead was the reason that uh, uh, Ving Rhames wanted to do this movie. Right. Because this series is known for, even in Day of the Dead, this series is known for like strong African American yeah. heroes. You know, um, Night of the Living Dead is like, oh, it was so progressive. But George, George Romero was just like, we weren't thinking about that. He was just no. the best actor he was just who the showed best actor up. We you know? had. <laughs> but, you know, have, have you seen, uh, uh, I think it was Horror Noir, and it was about like African Americans in yeah. cinema? Yeah. And it was just like, but it was progressive and transgressive at that time to have this African-American man during the height of the civil rights, yeah. you know, basically taking charge and facing off that, against the old guard. That's one thing. This movie doesn't have as much social commentary. Yeah. I think a little bit of it, mm -hmm. like especially with this preacher. It's playing. more on, the, well, yeah, that scene, but this it's more on par with the Dario Argento cut of the 78 version yeah. where it just strips away all of the commentary and makes more of a yeah. crowd mo pleaser movie. And I'm you wondering, know? like, because it could have been more, po not political, but it could have had more to say. But I wonder if, like, post 9-11, maybe they were trying to downplay yeah, that. Yeah, it just seems like... Whereas I think 21, 28 Days Later was made before 9-11, or it was being filmed. It was and probably that had, being filmed, yeah. That has a lot of, like, discussions about society. But like, even just, like, the scene where uh, uh, the, the Scarecrow, what's his name? Cillian Murphy. Yeah. Um, is like walking and there's all the pictures of the family members who are lost. I think and stuff that like was that. a coincidence, but yeah, yeah but it's seemed... like you see that and you just shot right back to it and you're like, whoa, yeah. like that's more powerful imagery. Yeah. I'm kind of okay with the fact that this one played it as just a zombie popcorn movie yeah. and didn't go as much into the commentary because I don't think that, well, I don't. Well, I've seen. I've seen Zack Snyder try to do social commentary I know, on stuff, I know. and I, I, you know what? I agree with you. But James Gunn, at that point as a writer, probably wasn't yeah. strong enough or trusted enough by yeah. the studio to do that. Also, oh, I can stuff. see the studio being like, "Let's on." Yeah, yeah the fucking that. dude who wrote Tromeo and Juliet. No, <laughs> no, I don't think we're gonna let you do that. You yeah. know. Um, so yeah, so it's it's uh, Ken Foray is in the scene, and he's kind of one of those preachers who every time there's a natural disaster or yeah. something happens, he blames he blames homosexuals like. and he blames you know like a pro life pro life pro, no, uh, pro choice pro choice people and all this kind of stuff. And it's the reason that the zombie apocalypse happened is because of that. You according know? to him, Acor no. Acor <laughs> fuck. I was about to say I'm like Whoa, first dude. off, fuck those kind of people. Actually, okay, actually, we never find the origin, so. No. I guess you leave, leave it up to the viewer's imagination. <laughs> if there were, Look, if there was a zombie apocalypse yeah. and I'm a survivor and I'm with a group of people and death is right outside, I'm fucking dudes. <laughs> I'm fucking chicks. I'm going to do every drug I can because why the fuck not at that point? You we know, you get all the drugs. I don't know. Well, we... we <laughs> Anyway, we don't know what's gonna happen in the zombie apocalypse. What if I get trapped at drug con, <laughs> drug and hot dude con? And I'll be like, when in Rome? <laughs> so when there's no room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Yes, uh, which, which we was... both said is the best tagline in movie history. When there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. But I said, there's a few better ones. Yeah. Uh, well, one, Pieces has two of the best. Yes. Which is... Uh, you don't have to go to Texas to have a chainsaw massacre. And, and then Pieces, it's exactly what you think it which is. Which is fucking perfect. I have that poster, the original Italian poster, framed in yeah. my living room. So it's the first thing you see on the wall when yeah. you walk into my apartment. My, uh, my, my favorite tagline recently is mm. for the Shaft reboot. Yes. Where the poster was all three shafts, mm -hmm. and it just says, more shaft than you can handle. I'm <laughs> like, that is... That is so goddamn funny. <laughs> that director is great. Mm -hmm. I forgive him for Fantastic Four 2, Oof. and I love Tom and Jerry, the new movie now. <laughs> Not that awful 1993 Not movie. That awful it's funny. After we shot that, like, I was mad at you. Like, <laughs> it's like I was home and I was doing dishes, and I'm like, you know what? Fuck Tony. <laughs> uh, so this this movie realizes it doesn't have enough uh, people to get eaten. Yeah. So more survivors come. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them being Ty Burrell from Modern Family. Mm -hmm. Who's the best character in the movie. Best character in the movie. Mm -hmm. And I'm really upset he hasn't reappeared. 
In the Hulk movies. Yeah, well, yeah. they haven't made Hulk well, movies, but yeah. like appeared in the MCU as Doc Samson because mm-hmm. that's what they were building up to, and I want to see him with long the green long hair. green hair, yeah. Because uh, that would be pretty funny. And then we also get Max Headroom. Yes, which when <laughs> I told you that, you're like, no, it's not. I was like, yeah. yes, it is. Who's up there? Max Headroom, yeah. the original story. From the directors of Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> right. Because he was also in uh, Watchmen. Yeah. After this, uh, he played the magician uh, guy. Um, I'm sure he has a character name, but I can't <laughs> remember it. I, I've read that book a hundred times. I yeah. I have Alzheimer's. <laughs> uh, and then the guy playing Tucker was mm-hmm. in Land of the Dead, Diary Land of, of the, the Dead. Dead. But you and know I him. I said because Jason X, because I fucking love Jason X. <laughs> Going back to my House of Cards movie idea, <laughs> everything should go to space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a uh, fat Lou, I think. Yeah. In mm-hmm. um, Jason X. Yeah, they bring in uh, them. Uh, there's like an old lady. There's, yeah, there's an old lady. Who's driving the truck. Yeah. Uh, there's the guy um, who plays the organ at the church. Right. He's like an older guy. There's a larger woman who's yeah. badly injured and yes. is played by a dude. Yeah. Um, and then there's the blowjob girl from Wrong yeah. Turn. And around this point is when pregnant lady is revealed to be bitten. Yes. Uh, so they're doing that cliche. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, there's no point to do Zombie Baby because it's already been done to perfection with Dead Alive. That's true. So, uh, so the one problem with this movie is mm-hmm. it is hitting all the zombie like c- cliches and yeah. tropes, and it's doing it legitimately. And then shortly afterwards, Shaun of the Dead came out, did all the same things but made fun of mm-hmm. it. So every movie like after these two, when they're doing like real cliche zombie things, it's just kind of like, ugh. I'm like, it's like the it. fucking superhero landing after Deadpool when you're like, all right, well, you took the piss out of that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I know. They're secretly mm-hmm. bitten. They're yeah. Secretly bitten. Okay. They're going to turn. But I was, we were saying before too, like, cause we were watching it and there's something wrong with the TV and right. like there was fucked up, but I do like the desaturation uh, mm-hmm. that he used and a lot of the greens and stuff like that because but it oversaturated. Made, well, the oversaturation only because it made the reds pop a lot yeah. more and it felt more like the '78 version, <laughs> which Tom Savini hates, but I think looks fucking yeah. great. You know, so the original uh, Dawn of the Dead, something happened with the makeup mm-hmm. and it came out the wrong color. Yeah. Or maybe the way the film was processed mm-hmm. changed the way it looked. I forget exactly because it looks it was. like melted crayons. Yeah, the yeah. blood looks orange mm-hmm. and the zombies all look blue. Yeah, and they were not supposed to look like mm-hmm. that, but that's how it comes off in the final product, which I think looks kind of cool. Because I have the uh, the I guess it was in the late '80s, early '90s. They put out a VHS version of it, and mm. I guess we don't have it here. I probably still have it at home. Mm. But the back main picture before the synopsis is like a nurse zombie and like a fat guy zombie yeah. and they just have like blue faces and they're like reaching out and I got it at Kmart and it was <laughs> awesome but do you remember when Dawn of the Dead on VHS and they had like that weird one with like the weird super colorful yeah. cover remember that yeah I remember that's when that. I was working at Blockbuster that came out it was like an anniversary one yeah, yeah. not like Night of the Living Dead where they just added <laughs> like oh Brink oh, Stevens God. is in it don't now don't even ma- don't even mention when those assholes added stuff to Night of the Living Who Dead. Who the fuck would add stuff to Night of the Who Living Dead? Who would look at Night of the Living Dead and say, not good enough? The answer is me. <laughs> Please watch Hack the Living Dead. You box yourself in the cellar and those things get in the house, you've had it. At least up here you have a fighting chance. Get away from me. Get, get away from me. Get away. They figure out, because the old lady gets up and is a zombie. Yeah. They and, stab her in the fucking <laughs> eye with that fire poker. The worst scene in the movie. Yeah. Uh, but Sarah Polly realizes this uh, virus is being sent through bites yeah. and scratches, mm-hmm. which is kind of what happened in the original. Yeah. But all, the original had that extra thing where it's like, if you were recently deceased, you come back to mm-hmm. life. But if you bite and scratch Well, someone, the guy says that when he looked like you with the eye patch for a while. Oh, yeah. Remember when you had an eye patch? Down to the line. (laughs) We're down. Everyone they eat gets up and kills. Tummies. Tummies. We've got to remain locked. At conventions, you need to start dressing like that guy. Dummy! <laughs> I'm going to make a fan film of that guy. I'm yeah. just going to be that guy. Uh, so they realize it's chair through bites and scratches. Mm-hmm. And they realize Max Headroom was bit. Yeah. And the one Best Buy guy, because he works at Best Buy, mm-hmm. he's like, I'm going to go kill them. And Sarah Pauly's like, no, don't. And then she's like, why don't you kill Tucker, too? He's like, well, I wasn't bitten. She's like, like, I wasn't bitten. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but the scene's really good with yeah. him and his daughter. Mm-hmm. And like he's like, hey, I, I understand. Yeah. And then it's like they, they're nice enough to wait for him to turn. Because he has that line where he's like, you want every last second. Yeah. As you could see, like, the life ticking out of him. Which is uh, this movie's version of Roger. 
uh, changing. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. uh, that was a sad scene where mm-hmm. he's like, I'm going to try and come back. And then he dies. And oh, he yeah. He's back. like, I'm going to try my best not to come back. And, all yeah. that kind of stuff. and when he comes up, because it's kind of the same as when the big lady comes up. Yeah. Where the, the sheet kind of comes off, which also reminds me of Fulci's zombie as well. Yes. Has that scene in it. Um, yeah. And it's really sad. Like, everyone's listening. And then you hear him just go like, Wah! and he gets shot. <laughs> and then it kicks into Richard Cheese's <laughs> Down with the Sickness. Uh, done as a lounge act. Yes, and uh, I love that they're just playing games mm-hmm. with the gun. They're playing chess with the gun guy. Yeah, they're because they he has a board. Yeah, and they're communicating with each other through binoculars, and they're playing chess. But he keeps losing in chess to the guy from across yeah. the thing, and he's like, "We need a new game." <laughs> so the game they start playing is picking zombies who kind of look like celebrities yeah. and blowing their heads off. <laughs> yeah, and um, it's. It's making fun of like uh, how they're starting to lose their humanity yeah. a little bit because they're becoming so desensitized to death. Yeah, which is a little bit like the original where yeah, they're like, the "Well, orig- time to go hunting," and they just well, murder. it's not even just that. Like, but they're also like living among the excess mm-hmm. of the mall because, like, in the original one, remember, like, they go and they take the money out of the bank right. and they take the candy and they're like trying on hats and Galen Ross is like getting dressed up yeah. and you know because there's that great scene where she's like in the mirror and she has the gun and she's got like the Cupid doll makeup right, on, which I right. think is really cool. Um, so this kind of mirror that scene a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, st- the dad from Modern Families having sex with the blonde chick who yeah. I forgot the blonde chick was in the movie. We didn't mention her. Yeah. Uh, uh, she kind of, I don't think they establish her well enough. No, she just, she just kind of up. appears. Oh, Ty Burrell. He also, there's a little foreshadowing here because she's oh. like, you guys are all messed up because mm. they're like enjoying shooting all the celebrity yeah. lookalikes. And he's like, lady, if I die, you have my permission to blow my head off. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh, don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> and then for some reason, the bald organ player guy decides to tell the security guards when he found out he was gay. Oh, yeah, because so they have the two security guards that, like, they turned on them. So they they, they get their guns and they lock yeah. them in the cell, which I didn't know malls had, like, holding cells. I imagine they... I worked in a movie theater yeah. that had, like, a police substation in it. Yeah. And Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia was well known for having a, a court and a jail because it's, like, Mad Max times uh, there. Artie Lang's uh, stand-up special, mm-hmm. Jack and Coke, he tells the story of when they televised... Like one of the first trials that happened there yeah. to some drunk guy, and he said, it, "I can't repeat what he said, <laughs> but it's one of the funniest things in the world." And look up Artie Lang's Jack and Coke special if you want to hear what that story is. Also, but it's just hilarious. Philadelphia, we are we are wonderful savages. Like <laughs> <laughs> we are beautiful savages. Um, uh, there's one joke in that special that doesn't work anymore. Oh. He's like, Eagle, Eagles fans love to spell their team name, E-A-G-L-E-S. They should use that word in a sentence, like the Eagles have never won a Super Bowl. But, but now they have. Now they have. We talked about that in an episode. I fell asleep and I missed it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so the guys are locked up in the in the thing, mm-hmm. and there's the organ players outside, and he's talking about the, the moment when he was 13, he knew he was gay because there's a guy, <laughs> and they're just like, um, please stop, because they can't go anywhere. <laughs> like, but that wasn't in the theatrical version. Why was that cut? Why is that in the unrated extended version? I think it's just more character stuff because I guess it would yeah. also explain that a couple scenes before that when they're doing like the whole like they're having fun at the mall, he has like a woman's high heel on. Yeah. And like maybe that explains it. Yeah. I, I don't know. So. I tried to walk in high heels once and I realized that You I, told this story. Yeah, and I was told this story on a recent neck. episode. <laughs> I just I, I wish I could do things like that. Like, you know, there's like a bunch of shit that I wish I could do and I'd be like, I wish I could like fucking walk in high heels and people be like, yo, yeah, yeah, that guy's not very good on that show with that guy we don't like, but damn, he looks good in high heels. Uh there's a really good character building scene mm-hmm. where people are talking about like what they did pre all this. Yeah. And then lights go out. Mm-hmm. And they have to figure out what's going on. Yeah. So they go into the garage, the parking garage, to look for something. Mm-hmm. Uh, they find a dog. They find a dog. What was his name? Chuckles. Chips. Chips. Yeah. Chuckles. <laughs> uh, yeah, not movies don't really show like what happens to animal life. You know what did a little bit? Um, uh, uh, I Am Legend. Oh, Remember they yeah. showed like animals from the zoo mm-hmm. broke out? And, yeah. Like, there's just lions in New well, York. That was another. George Romero wrote a DC comic back in the day called Toe Tags. Yeah. Uh, where it was like a fucking zombie hero, but he rode an elephant. And he like had an army of... <laughs> it was not a good comic at all, yeah. but I was like, that's kind of cool. Fucking Frankenstein monster zombie on yeah. an elephant, you know? Those lions are screwed. There's not enough lions to make. Oh, with. yeah, it's true. It's going to have weird inbred lions and zombies. At what, which one do you choose to be killed by? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that lion whose brain doesn't work and has uh, 
20 toes or the zombie. And I would be looking out from Hot Dude and Drug Con and being like, good thing I'm in here. <laughs> right, fellas? <laughs> yeah, and then we see uh, Mekki has his, uh, Makai has his uh, wife mm-hmm. chained up. Yeah. Because he still wants that baby. He wants that baby. With if he's going to have an African name or a Russian name. And I was like, can you meet in the middle? And then what would that be? <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, when, so they find the uh, legless dog because uh, the, the movie's cutting back and forth yeah. at this point. And then more zon- or no, legless dog. They find a normal dog, a legless zombie Because you went, them. oh, I forgot about that. Like, I uh, yeah, got he's you. He's like monkey bar. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of like real amputees in this movie. Yeah. 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 We had, uh, we had, uh, when we did Swamp Zombies, we needed a bunch of zombies. And mm. it, it's really hard to get extras to come do anything. Yeah. But we had two guys who came out who were real amputees and I'm like oh this is great and they're like yeah I want to feature you know this and that I was like great and then who, the editor like didn't use them oh. so we did this really fucking Joe Lascola did this really fucking cool makeup yeah. on this dude who actually didn't have an arm and another guy who didn't have an yeah. arm and then they're not even in the movie and I'm like then what was the point and why then the guy you, got really you, mad why did the, you cut it out dude? I didn't cut that movie the dude the guy uh, emailed me after the movie came out he's like oh great now I don't have an arm and I'm not in Swamp Zombies too." <laughs> And I said, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, but I like when they're just pouring gas on them and they yeah. light them up. That's pretty funny. Which I thought was at a callback to Night of Living Dead when the gas Maybe. pump explodes, you know? Yeah. What was those characters' name? It was like the girl and the guy and they... Their name escapes me yeah. at the moment. Yeah. But I remember when I called to them and yes. I told them that it was a bad idea. <laughs> I've heard about that scene <laughs> um, in film class. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so then it comes back to Mackay Pfeiffer and he's like, he's trying to like muzzle his wife. His wife who's chained up and like her belly's like fucking yeah. like bubbling and. Yeah. And uh, yeah, her belly's bubbling. And then uh, old lady is like, I'm going to go check on Mackay Pfeiffer and his wife. I'm going to go smoke a cigarette around. Yeah. I know a woman who's pregnant. And then like, she walks in there and she sees him holding the baby. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, no. And he's like, you want to take my family? Yeah. It's like, dude, it's a zombie baby. <laughs> yeah. So she kills the wife and then they kill each other. And then Sarah Polly and them come in. And, and Justin, like, he, she's getting shot repeatedly. And Justin's like, she could be all right. Like, <laughs> I'm sick. Uh, but then they come in and they're like, oh, no, a zombie baby. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently James Gunn had written a draft where the baby like killed somebody. Yeah. And the studio was like, yeah, no. Listen, listen, trauma guy. Well, what if it like the rabbits in uh, 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 Holy Grail? <laughs> <laughs> just flies and bites <laughs> off the head. Yeah, so uh, they come up with this plan. Mm-hmm. To build. Well, that's after they shoot a baby in the face. That's like. <laughs> right. That's right. But they come up with a plan mm-hmm. to build armored buses yes. that could take them to the marina mm-hmm. so they can use uh, Ty Burrell's boat. Yes. We go. looked up, because people have oh, criticized yeah. the island in the Great Lakes. There are 35,000 islands yeah. in the Great Lakes. I don't know how big all of them are. The One of them is the biggest island in an inland, like, body of water yeah. mm-hmm. in the world. So I guess they exist. I don't know how habitable yeah. they are. We have islands in the Delaware. Uh, everyone's favorite AVGN episode, Jurassic Park Trespasser. Yeah. Everyone loves that one. It's really great. When we uh, we took the jet skis out last year yeah. to that island, because um, yeah. that's how you guys did the episode. Yeah, we, there was an island in the Delaware River. Yeah, and we, we took the jet skis. Justin, Ryan, and I took the jet skis out there. And um, yeah, it was like, wasn't there like bridges? And there was just like the bridges collapsed. So the horses are just there. Yeah, I didn't like travel the island oh i was only on the coast as we were shooting that i was losing ground to stand on because the tide was coming in Mm -hmm. so those exist again i don't know how habitable they are Mm -hmm. i don't know where you're gonna get your food like i don't know what the fauna and well i mean at the end of of day of the dead they land on an island because there's the line in dawn of the dead where he's like we're gonna go to the islands he's like what island the guy the cop's like any island and then at the end of day of the dead they actually land the helicopter on the island and it ends with them fishing yeah and she's doing the calendar like in the beginning of the movie so like islands are like a motif in zombie movies and you have like full cheese zombie 2 and you know they find out their gun friend is dying yes we haven't checked in on our friend in a bit how you doing 
Oh, it looks like he needs help. Um, let's pretend like we don't know what he sent. Oh. What? Oh, I don't. What? Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. I'm not helping him. No, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they, they decide to help him because mm-hmm. they are better people than we yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> And they're like, all right, let's get him some food. Let's uh, let's uh, put a bunch of food on Chips the dog yeah. and let the dog run through. So they lower the dog down into the thing, and it just kind of runs by the the zombies. A lot of zombie movies are hit or miss on whether they go after animals yeah. or not. Like Night of the Living Dead, they eat a bug. Mm-hmm. I've seen zombie movies where they eat animals, but it's like And then there's rare. zombie dogs in the Resident Evil movie because Mila Jovovich right. kicks a fucking CGI d- monster dog in the face. That is true. Yeah. That is true. When her but, jacket gets smaller throughout the course of the movie. <laughs> yeah. But the traditional zombies, they don't usually eat animals mm-hmm. that much. But you would think like if you're reanimated meat and your base is just to eat because you don't need mm-hmm. it, but your brain is like firing, you know, yeah. uh, that anything would be... For food. some reason, it's specifically humans. Because they, they say it in this too. They're like, they don't want him. They just, they just want us. You yeah. know, it's like, did you ever see? Um, what was it called? The Dead Hate the Living. No. It's like a uh, brain damage films. You remember brain damage films? No. Nope. There was like, uh, there was like a dude. And he like was like a balding guy with like kind of a mohawk who would stand in front of like a, a green screen with a leather jacket on. He'd be like brain damage films. Like Swamp, oh, Zombies, I... Swamp Zombies One was on brain damage. Films. Yes. Okay, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking mm-hmm. about. Ben. But that was like mid to late '90s VHS, and it had yeah. a really cool cover. And it was just like zombies, just like they hate the living, so they want to eat the living. You know. <laughs> so whatever. If you're the guy from Brain Damage Films, please contact us. I would love to write The Dead Hate the Living, too. <laughs> oh, we forgot to mention Sarah Pauly's in love with Best Buy Guy. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Well. Anyway. Oh, that's right, because they're in the thing, um, and he's, like, showing how they can chainsaw. Chainsaw, yeah. And she's like, that's the most romantic thing anyone's <laughs> ever showed me. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they send the dog in, and uh, the dog goes through a little thing. But then the zombies all get all in. All get through the little thing, yeah. And they're like, oh no, what's happening? And then Nicole. Fucking Nicole. Who's well, the wrong here's tr- the thing. I would go after the, I would go try to save the dog. I You're love, a real Nicole. Yeah, I am a real Nicole. My sister's name is Nicole. Oh, is it? Yeah, let's see if she would do okay. this. Let's see if it's a Nicole thing or people begin with N thing. Let's see. I love animals and I would, I love dogs more than people. So I would definitely try to save the dog. Hey, Nicole. Yeah. This is uh, your brother, Tony, from Hack the Movies. Yes. Real quick, if uh, your dog went into a house across the street and there were like hundreds and hundreds of zombies everywhere, would you take uh, a car that you and other survivors could use to get away and risk it on getting your stupid dog back? 1,000%. It See, is a Nicole, it's a Nicole thing. thing. <laughs> All right, well, you're stupid, and uh, I would rather get Ian and like save my dog. See? <sighs> By the way, uh, Nicole, you were in that movie Hack the Living Dead, right? Yeah, I'm famous. Is that the best version of Night of the Living Dead you've ever seen? Yes. Well, <laughs> how many other versions of Night of the Living Dead have you seen? Um, um, the real one, and then that one. Well, which the, I well, thought yours was the real one. Well, never mind. Goodbye. <laughs> I, she's never seen the real one. What is wow, she she's about? a fucking liar. <laughs> Lying to all of your fans. Yeah. So they're like, all right, we got to go over there. <laughs> Actually, it's not even we got to save Nicole and the dog. Yeah. It's like, well, there's a lot of ammo over We need there. to, well, because, yeah, they go like, we have this many of this and this and this. And they're like, again, it's like, that's sad that Nicole died and Chips died, but we really need those guns if yeah. we're going to go to the lake and, yeah. you know, go to the island. So then they figure out how to, like, use the... The Michael s- Bay movie, The Island? Yes. That got sued because it was basically Clonus. Hearts, the Clonus yeah. heart, starring Peter <laughs> Rapes. Um, yeah, so they, uh, they, they could somehow access the sewer system. Yeah, which we never... Or the storm drain system, yeah. either one, and then they, like, go on underground uh they open up the manhole and the manhole has 1978 written which is on cool it. yeah yeah it's like okay that's funny because that's when the original came i out. was upset by the lack of chuds and ninja turtles in the <laughs> sewers <laughs> what if the movie just turned on a fucking dime and like all of a sudden it's ninja turtles versus chuds and then they see that but they're like 
not our problem. And they just continue yeah. on their way. <laughs> so they get in the store. They're packing up the ammo. They kill poor Andy, mm -hmm. the gun guy. And you hear the tribal music from yeah. the gun store in the 1978 version. Yeah, for version. some reason, the gun store in the 1978 version just had tribal music Which playing. was so weird. But then I was like, listen, you can hear it. And you were like, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then they save Nicole and Chips, I guess. Yeah. Could have done without that. But they get a lot I of ammo. I could have done without Nicole. And we could have saved chips. <laughs> I do love it. They're like, how are we going to get out? And like, barbecue. And they throw, this is the first of the propane yeah. uh, plan. And didn't like Mythbusters prove that that doesn't work? I don't think that would work. No. Yeah. Um, but the digital fire looks bad. So when they get back to the mall, they realize they're locked in. And the guy goes, goddamn Steve Marcus, okay. which is Ty Burrell's name. So Ty Burrell's character's name is Steve Marcus. Yeah. When I had the movie theater, when Justin and I worked together back mm. in 2004, we had a guy who worked for us, uh, who worked with us named Steve Marcus. Yeah. And Steve Marcus was not a manager, but he acted like he was a manager. And he was just the kind of guy that would, Ugh. so they say, goddamn Steve Marcus. And everyone in the theater turned back and looked at Steve Marcus <laughs> because that's something that we all used to say when we were in the break room or something like, goddamn Steve Marcus. And I was like, that was some serendipitous type shit right there. <laughs> so you know what's weird about these running zombies? Uh, the fact that they slow down. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they're like, huh. Oh, and yeah. I was like, why did, I know it's for dramatic effect, but it's like, what in universe logic would there be? They would just keep going. Yeah. yeah. Again, they're just reanimated flesh. Um, <laughs> but then it's the first of the uh, the slow mo bullet things that we see. Right. A state, you could. There's a lot of things in this movie where you could see where Zack Snyder is going. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's. I, I like his shot. Uh, choices. I like his color design. Mm. The slow mo stuff starts here that eventually became a bigger part of everything, yeah. you know? Yeah. But it's just funny that, that like, you know, that they would give him, he would, because he did music videos before this. Yeah. And they're like, oh yeah. I mean, a lot of directors came from music videos. Yeah. And he, uh, in, David Fincher, Alien 3. Uh, Michael Bay. Michael Bay. Did a bunch yeah. Of them. yeah. Um, uh, fucking Ridley Scott was an art director on yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you could see a lot of the stuff and then it's like he went on to do 300 and he's mm. going, and he, I'm a big fan of his work, but again, going yes. back to it, I was like, fuck this dude. And then I saw it and I was like, <laughs> you won me over, you handsome devil. <laughs> uh, and then um, one of the zombies is wearing a familiar looking striped shirt. Oh, and it looks like Christine Weston Christine Weston Chandler. Classic striped so shirt. So I said that to you as we were watching it. They're, they're, uh, the zombies follow them up into the thing and they're making a run for it and they got to get everybody. Mm -hmm. And there's a first zombie who's wearing a striped shirt with the white yeah. collar and I go, zombie looks like the zombified Christine Weston Chandler. You know, I'm looking for like a fucking, what's the medallion? <laughs> oh, the, the, the sonic shoe Sonic shoe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love when they're on the elevator. Mm -hmm. Just what's they dug from Outscar just goes, I like the song. Yeah, there's like a Muzak version of a thing, and apparently that line was ad libbed. It, like they just had they're just yeah. running from zombie Christine Weston Chandler. Yeah. They get into the thing and there's like the Muzak and they're quiet and he's like, I love this song. And there's yeah. like little character beats like yeah. that, which I was like, I like that, you yeah. know? Uh, that's that seems like James Gunn. Very, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh so another look alike. They get into their super powered buses. Yeah. And they're driving, but they're Which like... Which is funny because those super-powered buses, um, mm -hmm. I had written a zombie movie yeah. way, way back, and I went out to Hollywood with it and stuff like that, and Justin yeah. actually helped me on it, and uh, in the script was one of these type of buses, yeah. and I found out that an adult film actor comes from the same town as me, yeah. and he and I started talking through MySpace, and then we started <laughs> hanging out after that, and his name is Tommy Gunn, but he owns one of those. Oh, that's And nice. when I was out in Vegas, he's like, well, let's check it out. Yeah. So I go to him, and we just fucking were doing donuts in this <laughs> fucking van in the desert, and I'm like, how did I get... And then the next day, I went to P.F. Chang's with Corey Feldman and Don the Bishop Magic Wand, and I was like, this is it. My life is going to be great from here. And now you're here with me. Yeah, until I get to the hot dude in drug con with sometimes sexy redheaded chicks. And, until I fire you for well, being more popular than me. You, I, better, you better watch. I've read online that when I become more popular than you, you're going to get rid of me. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, don't worry. I'll get rid of you before that happens. Tony, if I'm dead, you've been dead for weeks. <laughs> uh, so anyway, lookalikes. Yeah. Um, the the van, the buses slow down, mm -hmm. so they throw the propane tank, and then this big buff zombie comes up. And I'm like, I'm looking in a mirror because I'm also buff, right? <laughs> Very. 
Yes. Very buff and very handsome. I just love out of all the zombies, <laughs> just a bodybuilder zombie mm-hmm. who I guess is still getting plenty of protein during well, the zombie yeah. apocalypse. <laughs> and he just picks That's it. what I always think about. I was like, imagine like zombies turned out to be real. I would be super cautious about how I dress from that point on because yeah. I don't want to be like zombie clown in death, <laughs> in after death or whatever, you know? And uh, they're like, there he goes. I went to high school with that fucking guy. <laughs> uh, and then I love this part <laughs> where they're like driving. Mm. Oh, first off, the explosion's cool. Well, the digital fire looks lame, but yeah. I love the shock wave. I love the shockwave of zombies. Yeah, falling. it's like a ripple effect. But yeah. again, I said like every zombie is clearly every person in Wisconsin yeah. is in that parking lot because there's so fucking many of them. Yeah. But then I was like, you ever been to like a big outdoor concert? Yeah. And you're like, how does that many humans mm. exist? Like, yeah. <laughs> They can all fit in the Grand Canyon. Everyone always says that. You can fit all the people in the world in the Grand Canyon. And then it's like, yeah, well, what are they going to eat and yeah. drink? There's not a lot of resources. I've never been to the Grand Canyon. I've never been there. I want to go there. I've heard it's nice. Yeah. I heard it's pretty big. I used to live in Arizona. You have heard it's pretty big. And you've never, and you never went to the Grand Canyon? No. Isn't it like there? It's, yeah, it's far away from where I lived in Tucson, though. Yeah, but you wouldn't. Crystal and I drove from Tucson to Phoenix and just stopped at a bunch of places, but we didn't go to the Grand Canyon. There is a Pennsylvania Grand Canyon. Really? Let me see. Let me see how far away it is. Okay. I went there on a Boy Scout trip many, many years ago. It is three hours away. Oh. (laughs) If you guys want us to go to To the the Pennsylvania Pennsylvania. Grand Canyon... Let us know, and let us know what movie review we should film from the, the Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Grand, Grand Canyon. Canyon. I can't. We'll bring all the cameras. We'll do a three camera setup at the Pennsylvania Grand Canyon. The park ranger's like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're in the they're in the bus, and like uh, the gay guy has the mm-hmm. chainsaw, and then like he loses his balance. And he just murders the fucking blonde haired girl. He like cuts her in half. You call him the gay guy. I called him the the pipe organ guy who didn't believe in God. I like that character motivation. You're way the too bald gentleman. Okay, you're way too tied into people's sexual orientations. It's because I'm confused about my own. That's true. Anyway, uh, and plus yeah, so- working with me every day has got to be even more confusing. I mean, like fucking Charles Atlas, peak perfection of man. <laughs> You ever just look at yourself in the mirror sometimes and like you go, I know that's my face and my body, but what happened? Like, <laughs> all right, so back up. No, the I used to have <laughs> I used to have a word bubble thing that I used to put in my bathroom mirror in my old apartment, and it said, "There's a reliable disappointment." And it was <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. So he kills her. Yeah. Uh, they crash, and I like that uh, Ty Burrell's character just leaves them. Yeah. <laughs> he just, like, yeah. Thing Rames is like, help. And he's like, nah. Nah. Uh, but then he gets killed. Yeah. And uh, Sarah Polly, uh, she delivers her promise. And blows, and his blows his fucking head, head off. <laughs> uh, and then she makes sure to get his key mm-hmm. to his boat that he mentioned he had. Yeah. And they just uh, so happen to know which boat it is, which they didn't explain. Mm. Uh, I think they said he might have said the name of it okay. early on, which right. would make sense if he said the name of it. Uh, yeah, so they're running away. They finally get to the marina, mm-hmm. um, and then poor Doug, Doug poor dies. Doug from Casa Card. Yeah. so I'm sure has a name. <laughs> <laughs> Security guard number one. Yeah, he's trying to like uh, buy everyone time, mm-hmm. and they all flood in. He just blows. Himself but I like up. before he dies, he's just like fucking figures and he yeah. has to blow himself up so yeah the ending i felt like they had too many survivors yeah but then the one guy best buy guy realizes he was bit mm-hmm. and then he's going to kill himself he's with a gun that materializes yeah the gun that appears and disappears yeah they show a wide shot of him holding nothing and then it cuts back and then cuts back and he has a gun i guess theoretically it could have been, been in his pocket but it's, it's just a weird edit but you and i were just like hey man like that sucks but can we have that gun please yes because we're probably gonna need it yeah I know you don't want to add to the zombies, but uh, we'll leave one in the chamber. Yeah. Empty the clip, leave Mm -hmm. one in the chamber. Yeah. Like, don't be so selfish. (laughs) Boy, best guy guy. Best best (laughs) guy guy. Uh, So that's a sad ending. And then the movie, like, abruptly ends. Yeah. Uh, they, but yeah, they, they go off into the water, and there's this beautiful (laughs) shot of Sarah Pauly with the magic hour behind her, and then it cuts to... Uh, Ty Burrell's home videos. Yeah. And then it cuts to the survivors on the boat finding his home videos, mm-hmm. which I'm sure was a Panasonic camera. Yes, of course. Uh, and they decide to uh, t- just document mm-hmm. stuff. 
Uh, so it's a cool end credit sequence where it's like just home videos of them yeah. on the boat. There's, There's a weird boobs moment. In it. Huh? There's, There's boobs, boobs in, in it. it. There's a weird moment where they find an abandoned boat. Mm hmm. And they open up a cooler. And there's a zombie head that's still alive. Which felt a lot like Zombie 3. You ever see Zombie 3? Maybe. Where there's yeah. the head that's in like a cabinet and yeah. it attacks them for no reason. There's a shot inside the mouth, you know? Yeah, it's just, it didn't fit with this movie's no. rules, I think. Because this movie is like you detach the head, yeah. the dead. Mm -hmm. The head wouldn't still be alive. No, it just felt like extra stuff. Yeah, then again, we didn't really see any of the zombies no. get decapitated, so maybe that's a thing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they uh, they uh, they end up on the island, mm -hmm. and it's just completely run by zombies. Zombies, yeah. Why would they... I would be a little further away and get the binoculars out. I would make sounds mm -hmm. to see if the zombies would come yeah. before I parked. Like, yeah. Where are we going? Ape Island. What do they got there? Apes. But they're not as big. <laughs> was that the Simpsons? The the King Kong one? And he's like, sure wish we were going to Candy Apple. Oh, no, it's like, I wish we were going to Candy Apple Island. He goes, what do they got there? Apes, but they're not as big. <laughs> That's when Mr. Burns has the line, or Smithers has the line, he's like, women and semen don't mix. And he says to, to Smithers, like, I know what you think. <laughs> Uh, so that's the ending. They might have all died. We don't know. Yeah, it's like a Blair Witch style yeah. ending. And this is the, the end of Dawn. Or is it? True. Because there was a Day of the Dead movie. Yes, where they talk about Ving Rhames has a brother that's at like Fort something yes. or other. And then the Day of the Dead remake. Is that the one with Dean Cain also? Dean Cain and Nick Cannon? Yes. I think the idea is that Ving Rhames in that movie is the twin brother of Ving Rhames in yeah. this movie because he mentioned having a brother. I forget if it's the same fort. I know, uh, I think the Halloween H2O guy directed it, maybe. Oh, really? I think. Oof. It's really bad. Yeah. And, uh, is Bub even in the movie? There's multiple Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead remakes, Yeah, there's right? like Day of the Dead, Contagion. Well, that was just a movie that was called Day of the Dead. Okay. So well, remember, like, there was a period of time where there was, like, a bunch of fucking Day of the Deads. Yeah. Yeah. Because people realized no one owns... But why were... Kieran and I were talking about... Uh, Nick Cannon yesterday, and I don't remember why now. <laughs> I think it was because of this. Oh, okay. But yeah, I remember that he was in that. You know what else Ving Rhames was in that was great? Yeah. Piranha. Pir oh, Piranha's the, the awesome. The Alex Piranha one. 3D. Yeah. Three, three double D. I didn't see double D. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me see here. The film was remade twice. The okay. first is the 2008 film. Okay. This movie was Day of the Dead Bloodline 2018. Damn. What? What is 2018 Day of the Dead Bloodline? Oh my God! I've never even heard is that of like this Hellraiser one. Like Hellraiser Bloodline, the one that was in space. <laughs> it was. That's Jonathan, what we call a callback. Jonathan uh, Skeech is in it. I know oh. him. I don't know anyone else in this movie. Skeech, 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 motherfucker. Uh, yeah. Let me see. Uh, Steve Miner directed the 2008 oh, remake. Right, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Not good. I think Bub's in it, and it's weird. I, oh, what was it? It was like he was a vegetarian. That's right. <sighs> so stupid. Uh, but yes, Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. Still great. No, Still great. a fine movie. Holds I 100% prefer yeah. the original. Yeah, me too. But this I mean, is, um, it's not... It's not an embarrassment. It's not. No. It doesn't take anything away from the original. You know. This is like when you want to watch a zombie stuff with the person you're hanging out with. Uh, their brain not big. Yeah. So, like they're us. Like, they're like, there's not enough action. Where's mm -hmm. all the jump scares? Like, all right, let's put the remake yeah, of Dawn yeah. of the Dead on. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, I like it. I liked it too. I like it. I'm interested to see how Army of the Dead yeah, turns I'm, out. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to see that. The yeah. first trailer was really cool. Who knows, maybe it'll be a Zack Snyder movie I like. I haven't had one of those in a long time. Aside from, like, the Guardians of Ga'ul, <laughs> I think I've ever seen I, I even liked Sucker Punch. I I don't... Yeah. I've probably seen Sucker Punch. I don't yeah. remember it. I did not see Guardians like a whole... Yeah, that was like... The like, last thing I liked was 300. <laughs> son of a bitch. Watchmen was great. Watchmen's like the best version of a cover song. Watchmen is Aerosmith's version of you know, Come Together by the Beatles. He was so slavishly devoted to the source material. Mm -hmm. So 10 hours into the movie, when he decided to change the ending, it ruined it for me. Like, you can't... You can't be like word for word and then be like, oh, but I don't like that major part of the ending. Let me change the complete context. I think people would have been like, I think they would have gotten to that point in the movie and been like, wait a minute, giant vagina squid? What is. But what then is the cat doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I, I know. I know. Watchmen is whatever. Yeah. I think he, he should have made more changes. One, to cut down the runtime. Yeah. Two, a lot of that dialogue doesn't work when it's said out loud. Mm hmm. 
three, less Malin Ackerman, please. <laughs> she was uh, Deborah Harry in that movie with Alan Rickman about uh, CBGBs. She was pretty good in that. Anton Yelchin's in it as well as Never saw David one. Byrne from The Talking Heads. I don't mind Malin Ackerman. Yeah. She was just really bad. <laughs> what was that awful movie she was in where like there was all the controversy because they photoshopped like the black couple in like the back, back, background, but they were main characters in the movie? I don't remember. It was like a Vince Vaughn movie. I have no idea. Do you remember, I remember there was I'll like a big up. controversy. Because <laughs> I remember when we got the poster and I had to hang it up and I was like, these fucking people are like out of focus in the background. <laughs> but that's like an important dude. Like that's a good yeah. an actor, you know? Anyway, that yeah. is it from us. Uh, hopefully these zombies go away. I, know, I gotta get to episode. my car. I gotta get cat food. Yeah, yeah. Oh, your cat's dead. Oh. No. She, she's You think fine. she could survive? Yeah, because yeah. I feel like she would strike a deal with her. She's evil as fuck. My cat's dead. Oh, your cat's very dead. My cat, my yeah. cat gets sick every other week. Mm -hmm. That cat's gone. Plus, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be your friend. When I came over, he was like, oh, I'll be your friend. He wants to be everyone's friend. I know. My cat's just like, how much money you got? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So like that's Dawn of the Dead. Uh, is that guy all right? Oh, no, he's dead. Oh. Anyway, like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>